There's a question I got got asked because I, I had I had Pete um Doherty on the yeah. on the podcast a while back, um about a year ago actually. Um and we were talking about your your sort of uh, fledgling I said fledgling, it's uh, your your early run with the the Libertines. And I wasn't quite sure whether the, like he, whether this is fact, I, mean, I feel like I can confirm it now because I've got two, yeah, two, yeah. two different views on it. But he said that the the reason that you didn't stay on in the band is that they had to play a gig to um, the Rough Trade label that was coming to see them. But you yeah. had been, you decided you were going to stay in Cardiff and party with a band. And I can't remember the band off the top of my head. Uh, well, it's that's almost true. I was, um, yeah, well, it probably is. Let me think about this. I want to be really, really accurate. I was on tour with the Alabama Three. That was it, yeah. Yeah, and I had um, I w- I'd never planned to do to play in the Libertines for long. Mm-hmm. I I loved the band, and they were like, you know, my my friends. You know, I we were you know we were sort of a gang of very close friends, and I really loved what they were doing. But I always wanted to do my own thing, and um, John, who you know uh, was a big friend of mine, you know. We, like heroin buddies in the 90s you know and we'd known each other for a long time um uh he'd said to me look i think the band isn't going anywhere pete peter and carlos are like they're kind of losing it and you know what should i do i don't really feel like doing the band anymore and i was like well just do whatever you want to do and he was like and he left the band and then like i was off doing other stuff and then they had like a gig that was suddenly really really important and they were like, well, can you just come in and play bass? And I was like, and Gary had come in on drums. And I said, yeah, I'll come in and fill in for a couple of gigs, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, John left the band and he's my mate and I'm not going to, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to do it long term, you know. But Peter had had this, yeah, it's all linked because they'd got, he'd, Peter had gone and seen the strokes and he'd decided that he, the way he was going to make it was to try and get. Um, From what he taught me, he sold them acid. <laughs> Mm, yeah um he might have done but the thing he got from it this is when he got steve to sing in the band but he wanted he thought if he gets the if he gets all his best looking friends in a band then it would be more like the strokes so that was kind of the game plan (laughs) that's i mean that's canny it is canny yeah yeah but that didn't quite it didn't work out it didn't pan out that way but anyway so i so literally i wasn't like i wasn't up John because you know he'd kind of left the band and he was my mate as well so I was like look I'll come and I'll do a couple of gigs and then I'd got a gig I was really really into you know I was I was, I was doing my own thing where I felt like I sort of felt like Lead Belly and The Clash were the same thing yeah but no one else in the world understood that mm-hmm. so I was doing these shows on my own that were kind of like punk gospel i don't know blues i don't really know how to put it and um i was getting pretty good at that and then out of the blue what's his um sorry boy what's his name um rob sprague from from alabama the reverend larry love is his name so was he larry love anyway um yeah he was and he he came and saw me play and he said fucking right boy that's Come on, come on tour and fucking do Lead Belly. I've got a fucking gospel choir, fucking mint. <laughs> and I was like, that's my best, that's my best impression, by the way. And um, and I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, we want you. I'm dropping the impression. Uh, we want you to come on stage and at the end of our show and play the Midnight Special. And they've got this gospel choir and they're going to sing it along with you. Come and do it on tour every night. Wow. And I, and I was like, yeah, man. So I went off to do that, you know. And I was getting paid in coke. Which was kind of like, I mean, you know, I was I, I was a heroin addict from the age of 16 to 20. So by the time this was, I was a bit old, I was 21, 22 by then. So I didn't have that much interest in, in coke or drugs in general because I'd kind of done, done my time and moved through it. Could you could you not have asked them for the monetary equivalent? I didn't even mention money. You know, I was just so pleased to be doing it. You know, yeah. I just uh, and it, what, but as it as it transpired, they just they just kept giving me a bag of bag of coke after every gig. So whether whether it's an official payment or not, I don't know. But yeah, and then it was great. Um, and then yeah, the, I knew that there was this rough trade gig coming up, so I went to a payphone and I called Carl and I said, "Listen, I'm really sorry. I'm out on tour with the Alabama and I'm in Cardiff and um, I can't make the gig. You know, 
well, I just felt like it was kind of like a thing, you know, like I said, I was going to come in and dep in the band yeah, for, of course. for a couple of gigs. Do you know what I mean? And uh-huh. then, then I was out on the road sort of with an opportunity concerning my own career, you know, because it wasn't like it wasn't like I was going to do the Libertines thing long term, you know. I definitely. I want to come back to the fact that you were such a Clash fan because like, surely it must have made you jealous that they did their debut album with Mick Jones. But like the the question I kind of want to ask you before that is how like how do you get addicted to heroin at sixteen? I come from like a small place in Northern Ireland, like very provincial. Well, you know, Belfast, province Belfast is the best place in the world to clean up, and that's what I did actually when I was really? twenty. Really? Yeah, I had a girlfriend from Donegal D, uh-huh. up the coast. Yeah, and um, we went out there. Anyway, it's a long story. But um, how do you get? Uh, well, how do you get hooked? You just keep is it, doing is it, it. Is it because? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but but like. I I I'm only asking just simply due to the fact because like you know being 16 and from Oma where I'm from is very different to being 16 from from London. Like was it was it because you were out at club nights and running around with the Libertines and pe- people like that or? No, that was it was a long time before the Libertines. When I met Pete, well no, I'm mean not that long, but I met Pete when I was about 18, and and me and John were both heroin addicts, and Peter had a duffel coat and a bicycle and listened to uh, Bell and Sebastian. And he was very shocked by the by the drug use, and he was like, he'd hang, you know, he'd be like, "Man, you don't need to do that. Don't do that." It was, it was. He had a sort of wide-eyed innocence about him that was very endearing. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of, it was more like, um, yeah, it was more like the Cam. I don't know. There was a kind of scene in Camden, you know. And first, I don't know. I got into, you know, I got into LSD because I was always with the with like the eco warriors squats and that kind of stuff. And, you know, that was where I'd run away from home to go and hang out there. And there was a lot of acid, so I got into that. And then I got into speed or whatever. And then you know, because that was just around in Camden. And then after a while, it sort of became a bit, and then it, you know, ease and stuff. But it sort of became a stigma because we started to feel like all those drugs were hippie drugs. Mm-hmm. So maybe not speed, but. Um, so it was like we sort of wanted might even have been an image thing that we wanted to like graduate to um, a drug that suited our image more and you know heroin seemed to fit the ticket you know and that was about right for the first two times you take it and after that you don't really have too much choice you, you, you're taking it because you just want to take it because nothing else has any um, has any allure at that point 